Good morning, and welcome to First Lutheran Church in Clifton, New Jersey. I'm Pastor Jeff, and we're so glad that you've joined us here for worship this Sunday morning. Though we cannot gather together and worship in person yet uh, here, we know that through the gift of the Holy Spirit, we are, we are united no matter where we are. We are building first in faith. May God bless us in our time together. Please join me in our confession and forgiveness. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in singing, Come Thou Almighty King. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray in unison. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Romans, the eighth chapter. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. 
For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do we have any children here? Come on down in front of the screen. Oh, it's so good to see you. Hugs. High five. Oh, thanks for coming today. It's so good to see you. Well, you know, I want to share with something that I love to eat. I don't know if you've ever heard of these things, but do you know what these are? Yeah, M&Ms. Oh, I love them. You know, let me pour some of them out here. I wish you were here so I could share, you know, but here I am. You know, look at all those M&Ms. Look at all the pretty colors. I love all those pretty colors. You know, there's orange ones and blue ones and yellow ones and green ones. Here's a brown one right here. What's inside of an M&M? It's right, chocolate. Yeah. So if I were to cut open this brown one right here, what color do you think the chocolate would be? Brown? Okay. Well, here goes. Okay, I cut a brown one open. There's a brown one. And look at what's inside. It's brown chocolate. You're right. All right, well, let's try something different. Here we go. What color is that? Orange. That's right. Now, if I cut open an orange M&M, what's inside? Chocolate. Right. What color do you think the chocolate will be inside of an orange one? I'll bet it's orange. No, you think it's brown? All right, well, let's see. Well, here's the orange one, and the inside is brown. You were right. The chocolate is brown on the inside of the orange one. Well, how about a blue one? Here's a pretty blue one. All right, let me try to cut it in half here. All right, well, here's the blue one. Blue there. I'll bet there's going to be blue chocolate inside of it. No? You think it's brown? You're absolutely right. You know, these M&Ms remind me of people. People are all different colors. They're brown and black and white and all different shades of skin. And yet, although we might look different on the outside, on the inside, we're all the same. We all have a heart that loves God. And that makes us all children of God with a beautiful rainbow of colors. You know, if you get to eat some M&Ms at some time, maybe you could remember when you see different colors of M&Ms or, or crayons or whatever different colors you see, let's remember that even though we might look different on the inside, that we're all the same on the inside. Let's pray that we can remember that. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for making people 
in different colors of skin. Help us to remember that though we look different on the outside, we are all the same on the inside. We have hearts that love Jesus. Thank you for making us brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up, and you can go back to your seats now. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No. For in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned. But gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. Jesus answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man, the field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today we gather to worship a master who sows good seed. Just think of all the good things that God has blessed us with. We rejoice in the gift of family and of friends. We've been blessed with plenty of food to eat and even sweets like M&Ms and stuff like that to enjoy. We're blessed with homes to live in. We have a wonderful church family to support us and to nurture our faith lives. And we have the blessing of this new day. When you really think about it, God has really blessed us, hasn't he? You know, I especially feel blessed when I'm, when I'm relaxing at the lake or at the beach. I'm in awe of the beauty of all that God has created for us, and I'm very thankful for my health as I soak in the warm sun or take a swim in the cool, refreshing water. The trouble is, some days, some days at the beach, there are these nasty biting flies called greenheads. Have you ever experienced them? They're awful. Yeah, they come and they bite you and they're all over the place. Other times at the lake, especially in the evening, there's, there's mosquitoes and they come and they bite you and they swarm around you. Now, can you tell me, why in the world did God make greenheads and mosquitoes? I'm pretty sure God didn't create greenheads and mosquitoes 
just to wreck a beautiful day at the lake or at the beach. And yet, I sometimes find myself blaming God for these annoying insects. And it draws my heart away from the beauty that God has created for me. Have you ever blamed God for the pains in your life? Have you ever blamed God when things don't go as well as expected or as well as hoped for? Have you ever blamed God when, when sickness comes to family or friends or to yourself? Are you tempted to blame God for this pandemic that we're going through, wondering why God would cause such pain and suffering and death and anxiety throughout the entire world. Why is it that we blame God when bad things happen? That's what the servants did in our gospel reading today. They blamed God for all the bad stuff. Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? They questioned the goodness of the master. Lord, if you're so good, where did this evil come from? Jesus reminds us that it is the devil who is behind all evil, not God. The Bible is very clear that the devil is real. He is active and he is evil. The word devil in the Greek language is diabolos, the diabolical one. The devil is the enemy of all that is good and all that is godly. The devil is cunning and sneaks in during the night to plant bad seed. The devil loves to lull us to sleep thinking that he's not real, that he's some crazy cartoon character with a pitchfork and horns and a tail and something that we can't even believe in. The devil loves to get us thinking about that and, and then doubting that he's even real. And then he loves to sneak in and get us inside, blaming God for all our problems. The devil loves to lie and cheat and deceive us. And he does all this while we are sleeping, when we're not paying attention to our faith life. Think about the parable of the weeds and the wheat. The devil doesn't plant the seed during the daytime when people might see him. The devil sneaks in while we're sleeping. The devil doesn't come in growling and roaring and saying, look at me, here I come, I'm going to get you. He doesn't want to wake us up. Instead, the devil sneaks in. Sneaks in where we are most vulnerable. The devil sneaks in when we're tired, when we're stressed, or when we're lonely. The devil sneaks in when we're sick, or when we're angry, or when we're hungry, when it's harder for us to, to battle temptation and to battle evil in this world. The devil sneaks in when we're preoccupied with other things, when we're, when we're tired of following all of the safety precautions around COVID-19, the devil sneaks into our minds and says, well, don't you think that God is punishing you? Where else would this evil have come from? Didn't you plant good seed, Lord? The devil sneaks into our minds and he makes us think that it doesn't matter what we do right now. That the doctors are just trying to take away all of our fun. The devil seems to know just what buttons to push on you and on me. And sometimes he tries to get us to blame God for everything bad in the world. And the devil sometimes even gets us to begin to believe it. And the weeds are planted within us and doubts begin to grow in our heart. Then... Then the devil's got us right where he wants us. The devil tries to get us divided. The devil tries to get us fighting amongst ourselves because the devil knows that if God's children truly work together as brothers and sisters, 
We can accomplish amazing things in Jesus' name, and the devil will have no power over us. But if he can divide us, we're in trouble. The truth is, there is a war going on between good and evil. And the truth is that there is good and there is evil fighting inside each one of us. There is good and evil inside our community, and there is good and evil fighting inside of our country, and there is good and evil fighting in our world. So what do we do? How do we stand in the midst of this? As the weeds and the wheat are growing up together, side by side, in this world that we live in. What we need to do, my friends, is we need to stay awake. We need to stay awake and we need to stay connected. We need to connect ourselves with God so that evil has a harder time sneaking into our lives. We need to pray. Pray at noon every single day. Pray at 1.37 every single day to connect ourselves with God who loves us and who has power to help us stand in these times. We need to pray so that the seed of God's love grows strong within us and can strengthen and guide us to face each day. We need to stay awake and to surround ourselves with a community of believers, good Christian friends who will keep us on track who will support us against the evil which threatens to devour us. As long as we are alive, my friends, good and evil will be part of our daily lives. We are called to remain faithful to God no matter what life brings. Sometimes, sometimes things can be painful and the way might seem difficult. But God has blessed us. God has blessed us with all good things. It is the devil who brings evil in this world, not God. So stay awake and keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. Give thanks for all the good things in this world. And let that goodness grow in you each day. As you grow in faith and love towards Jesus Christ. And as we share that love with everyone in this world. Amen. Let us confess together our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another in the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of the harvest, you sow the good seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ into your field. Help your church throughout the world to be both diligent and patient, full of resolve and gentleness, that our witness may be faithful to your intentions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all space and time, your whole creation groans in labor pains awaiting the gift of new birth. Renew the earth, sky, and sea so that all your creation experiences healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
God of the nations, teach us your ways that we may walk in your truth. Mend the fabric of the human family, now torn apart by fear. Guide us by your mercy, grace, and steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer and are near to the brokenhearted. Open our hearts to your children who are lonely and abandoned, who feel trapped by despair, and all who suffer in any way, especially those we name before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the seasons, in the midst of summer, give us refreshment, renewal, and new opportunities. We pray for the safety of those who travel and for those who cannot take the rest they need. We pray for wisdom that we will all make good decisions that will slow the spread of COVID-19. Give us patience and strength as this pandemic continues. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, those who have died in you shine like the sun in your endless kingdom. We remember with thanksgiving the saints of all times and places and saints close to us, especially Arthur Anderson. Gather us with them on the day of salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer which our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. I invite you at this time to share the peace of the Lord with those who are with you in the room. And if you're by yourself, that's fine. I invite you to pick up your cell phone and, and text peace be with you to someone that you know. If you don't have your cell phone with you, that's absolutely fine. Wait till after worship, pick up the phone, send a text, send an email. Simply share God's peace with those around you. At this time, I'd like to say a word about your offering. To begin with, I'd like to thank you for keeping up with your giving to our church. We've had very generous gifts, and though we are a little behind, we are doing okay, and I thank you for those gifts. Remember that your offerings are your faithful response to all that God has given to us. They allow this church and the greater church to continue ministry to God's people in our local and global communities. If you're unable to give as much at this time due to a change in finances, we completely understand. However, it is vital that those of us who can give continue to do so. Please send your offerings electronically or by mailing a check to the church building at 1337 Van Houten Avenue in Clifton, New Jersey. Thank you for your generosity.
Let us pray in unison. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in singing Children of the Heavenly Father. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God bless you.